We've been lucky enough to get a special issue of the Biological Journal of the Linnaean Society um, to agree to publish a collection of conference papers from a meeting that we held here in Southampton at the NOC last October. Now this conference was an a international meeting to celebrate the connections between the Isle of Wight, so the early Cretaceous rocks on the Isle of Wight, so rocks that are about 120 million years old, and their contemporary rocks in the western part of China, which has become famous in the last few years for all the different kinds of feathered dinosaurs, early mammals, fossil early flowering plants, lizards, snakes that have come from that part of China. So um, with the collaboration of one of the ex-professors, retired professors in the biology department called John Allen, we were able to get this special issue published. It's a collection of um, 14 or 15 papers that were presented at the conference. It's a summary of research that's been going on in the last few years on the Isle of Wight, which we are happy to say and excited to say is one of the best places in Europe for collecting the remains of dinosaurs. So since I came to Southampton four years ago, I've been trying hard to promote the Isle of Wight as a place for fossil collecting and as a place for Southampton-based vertebrate paleontology research. So on dinosaurs, early mammals, pterosaurs, lizards, snakes, crocodiles, turtles, all the kinds of vertebrate animals, animals with a backbone that are found just before the uh, end of the Cretaceous, so at the kind of middle of this age of dinosaurs that people will be familiar with. Well, one of, the, one of the most exciting things about this special issue is that we've been able to synthesize, really for the first time, some aspects of the geology and paleontology of the Isle of Wight. In particular, a group of colleagues have put together a series of five papers that look at the dinosaur footprints and foot casts that are, that are world famous from the Isle of Wight. So people that go to the Isle of Wight, go to Brook Bay and along the southeast coast of the Isle of Wight, find footprints and foot casts of giant herbivorous dinosaurs, animals like Iguanodon, big theropods like Neovenata, animals like that. These are quite common on the beaches of the Isle of Wight. People have been collecting them for more than a century, but never before has a historical and current synthesis of research on these footprints been put together. So this is one of the, one of the key things that's coming out this month, next month, in this special issue of the journal. So that combined with descriptions of new fish, new mammals, new crocodiles from the Isle of Wight. So we think, we hope that this is one of the one of the places that people interested in the paleontology of the island will go to first when they want to you know, learn about the geology, the paleontology, the fossils from the island. We are interested in particular in this period in the Cretaceous, the early Cretaceous, because so few rocks in the world preserve this particular time period in geological history. Most of the Cretaceous is known from very late Cretaceous sediments, so most of the dinosaurs that people will be familiar with, animals like T. rex, Triceratops, these are dinosaurs from the very late Cretaceous, so in rocks 70, 80 million years old. The Isle of Wight, it's unique in Europe in the number of dinosaurs that come from this earlier Cretaceous period, so around 120, 130 million years ago. It really is a very critically undersampled section of the geological past, if you like, if you're interested in dinosaur evolution. So putting all this information together in one volume is, is, a, good, is a good thing for researchers interested in, in this period of dinosaur evolutionary history. And it's good for Southampton because here in the south of England we have some of the key European localities that document this Jurassic Cretaceous transition. The Isle of Wight is important for my research, features a lot in the work that we do in Southampton. We try to use it as much as possible for undergraduate, masters and PhD research projects, working on marine reptiles, crocodiles, dinosaurs and pterosaurs in particular from the Isle of Wight. So yeah, it's, a, it's an important area, very close to us of course, so this is something that I think people should know about. If you come to Southampton you have the opportunity to do lots of field work, collect in some of the best places in Europe for collecting dinosaurs. Yeah, our MRES course, Masters in Research in Vertebrate Paleontology, has been running in Southampton for three years and we're just about to welcome nine new students next week who'll come here to work on hopefully mostly fossil-based 
fieldwork based projects in the south of England. So using our connections with the Isle of Wight, with Sandown Museum, Dinosaur Isle, with local collectors, with the Jurassic Coast, with the Dorset County Council, the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Trust, we try to find fossil-based, specimen-based projects for students to work on that gives them the chance to describe new fossils and get out in the field and collect fossils. Ah, the Isle of Wight's great because um, it's important for paleontology because of the age of the rocks, but also for such a small island um, and with such a small, relatively small amount of outcrop, fossiliferous rock exposed just a few kilometers on the south coast of the island. More fossils have been collected, more vertebrate fossils have been collected from the Isle of Wight than pretty much anywhere else in the world per area of exposed rock. So really it's very important. We try to understand the kinds of animals that lived there in the early Cretaceous, what their environments were like, what they were doing, what their ways of lives were, and um, try to fit this into the context of global dinosaur evolution. That's what we're trying to do. Well, from an early age, kids are fascinated by dinosaurs, T-Rex and volcanoes and things like that. So, I mean, often that's something that gets kind of preserved through school. And when people come to university to study geology, biology, they find that, you know, these are exciting areas that kind of overlap, you know, the physical sciences, things like geology with the more biological sciences, zoology, evolution. So it's, an, it's a way to combine lots of different interests if you're if you're interested in geology, biology, living animals. So. Well, from the journal publication, we really hope that people will take away an appreciation for how important the Isle of Wight is globally in our understanding of dinosaur evolution, vertebrate animal evolution, and also that if you live in Southampton and the Hampshire area, you're so close to some of the best fossil collecting areas in the UK. So you're lucky if you go to school or university in this part of the country because you can go collecting, finding good fossils really quite easily. Those are the, really the two things that I hope people will get from reading this special issue.